Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Until I met my new best friend All of my boys say I'm tripping When they call I'm not answering They always get my voicemail Cause I said Aristotle, are we rolling? We are rolling. Welcome to another episode of Sorry I've Been So Busy. The podcast where we talk to very busy people about what they are busy with. Sometimes we talk to not very busy people about what they are pretending to be busy with. Uh, we we And we're in... L.A., the we land of busy, busy people. Yes, the land of either, uh, well, specifically the land of people. Uh, the land busy. of fake busy people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this Los has Angeles. been fake everything, but fake busy for sure. That's Andrew Goldstein, by the way. At Ange Gold on Twitter, A-N-G-E-G-O-L-D. I'm trying to get this cookie out of my uh, Gluten-free gum. vegan cookie. Not a gluten-free vegan cookie. And not a lot of pizzazz. No, it's not in a lot of pizzazz, and I'm and yet like eating I'm dirt. Gonna, it's one of those things where it's like, this is bad. I better eat the whole thing <laughs> yeah. to make up for uh, how uh, not good it is. Um, I'm Matt Goldich, at Matt Goldich on Twitter, M-A-T-T-G-O-L-D-I-C-H. And uh, we are in, uh, not in the Showbiz Studios in New York. We're in the uh, Nerd Melt, uh, the Nerdist Studios in Los Angeles. Recording. Shout out to the Nerdist. Thank you so much for having us. A few episodes out here with some friends. It's finally been a great chance to get out here and, uh, and uh, talk to some people that we wouldn't normally get to see in New York City. Um, but uh, people should still check out uh, showbrizstudios.com. Always. And the Showbriz Studios Twitter feed, the YouTube page. Find out about all the uh, the other, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, cookie in my throat, all the uh, other podcasts <laughs> in the Showbriz family. And uh, and thank you to everybody who's been, uh, we got a lot of nice comments, Andrew. So many good comments. A uh, f- uh, couple friend of ours, uh, the male pa- uh, member of the couple. Okay. Uh, the husband? No, it's one of Jamie's best friends. Her mm-hmm. husband, uh, Brian Polliner, is our busybody of the week. Oh. He recently told me that he, uh, you know, he's on paternity leave. They have a, a, a very uh, new young uh, child, daughter, and uh, he's been listening to the podcast. Nice. He's and been going, taking some time for himself, going to the gym and listening to our podcast. I don't think of our podcast as something you'd want to listen to at the gym. No, but he said it. It, it you know it makes the the workout. Fly I can't by. listen to podcasts at all at the gym. I have, I do. I go full podcast. The, at the gym. only uh, thing that can motivate me to work out is like intense music. Yeah, I used to be that way. Yeah. I used to have a playlist, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm so, uh, in, you know, I need to get through my cue that yeah. I'm, I'm like so, I'm like uh, tunnel vision. I gotta get I gotta get these podcasts. I'd rather be behind on the tunnel. Well, anyway, thank you. What's the guy's name again? Brian Polliner. Shout out to Brian. He's our Busy Body of the Week, Brian Polliner. And if you would like to be our Busy Body of the Week, please post a review, a rating of the uh, the podcast on iTunes. Um, leave a comment on the Facebook page. Yeah. Applepodcast.com. Mm-hmm. Search for Sorry I've Been So Busy. And you can leave a five-star review, a star, five-star rating, and leave us a review. You can tweet at us at Busy Podcast. You can go to the Facebook page Facebook at page. Busy Podcast. And... Uh, and uh, tell your y- friends, you know, please, yeah, or just run into us on the street. In Find New York, us, stalk us in LA, and uh, you could too could be our busybody of the week. Uh, any other business we want to uh, get out of the way? Uh, no, I'm just how, I'm enjoying being in LA. Yes, yeah, so, you know, the, uh, we were. I was thinking about this. Um, you know, I lived here for a few years. Yeah, and uh, you've never lived here. I, I, I'm, you know, 17 years in uh, to New York. I'm just now starting to think, like, man, I probably should have done you've, like a good like four or five years. You've visited a bunch, though. We had a week yeah. when I was living out here. You came out and I think you stayed with us. Right? I love having you guys in New York, but I definitely, mi- when I come to LA, yeah. I miss the fact that you guys lived here because I always had somewhere. to And this stay. was pre kid, and we we basically was, had all the time. We did the food tour of all oh, the favorite the LA places. Uh, Langers and yeah. Zanku chicken and and uh, umami burger with Robin because yeah. you can't eat bread. Sure, and uh, we went to uh, we went to uh, Katsuya. Katsuya, yeah. yeah, we saw Anthony Anderson. What? Uh, that's right. Wow, good good memory. I forgot about that. What? How? What have you been busy with uh, while you've been in? I've LA? been bopping around. I've been walking around meetings and and uh, podcasts and stuff, and taking a bunch of Ubers and uh, uh, you know, I've had a, a co- I've had three main. Uh, observations about LA again. Like I said, seventeen mm-hmm. years in New York. Um, c- 
coming to L.A., there's a lot of things different. Okay. I can't and wait to hear. You, this is the, I believe you're the first person ever to compare the, two the fact that there are differences between the two. So yeah. I would like, I would like, I want to hear what never you been a, This has never been a joke no. premise. Yes. Ever. Um, After this, we're going to talk about how women like shopping. But go yeah. ahead. No. And the differences between white and bl- black yes. people and mm-hmm. white people. Yeah, yeah, the dancing. Uh, yeah, and the yeah, yeah. Uh, so the first one is uh, I, again, third time I'm saying it. Seventeen years in New York. I'm. It's very. Uh, I, I'm a creature of habit, and I don't realize it until I come out here. I'm walking around these. I'm walking everywhere because I'm a New Yorker mm-hmm. now, and. Uh, I don't know. I'm stepping off curbs like I'm in New York. Yeah. And I I got to say, if I was to move here, I think I'd last a week before I get hit by a car. Yeah. You I, would get, I would get mowed down by a Land Rover so fast. It's almost happened to me a few times already because I'm stepping off curbs. I'm like just walking thinking cars will stop for me. And they're whipping around the corner in like a Bentley. Traffic is so uh, slow in New York that even the most... Uh, uh, unaware, like even the fastest, uh, worst tri- driving cab can only do so much damage. Yeah, to I because uh, we and, always had this argument. Mm-hmm. Jamie's like, "Come on, stay on the sidewalk," and I was like, "They see me." I'm and good. In, yeah, and in New York, it's like if you're a pedestrian, like you, like no, really, if you're anyone, like in New York, if you have confidence, you own your part, you're that part of the the sidewalk or the street. Like yeah, you're just like, you hey, know, I'm walking across the street. You know, uh, fuck you, cars. It's sort yeah, of like, and you eh. know, as a driver in yeah. New York, like be aware, like people are walking at all times. But yeah. in L.A., it's a car city, man. It's right. a it's a it's a transportation city. So, like last night, I was walking home. I, I went to see. Um, uh, one man show at UCB, and I walked back to my hotel. It was like a twenty minute walk, and I'm stepping off curbs, and these cars are whipping around the corner. Yeah, that's your mistake. I would not last. Yeah. Uh, but that's how you do it in New pe- York. So that's pe- my first one. Pe- that people in New York drive and in, in, uh, in New York walk, and in LA they drive. No, I'm simplifying. But, uh, no, no, you was more specific. I, I, I just, apologize. I would I mean. like to. See, I think it would be very dangerous for me to live here. Yes. Uh, secondly. You know, everybody talks about L.A., the industry is entertainment. Everybody is yeah. some kind of either in the entertainment business or entertainment adjacent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's the, that's what moves the town. I disagree. I think the num- to me, the like um, low-key number one uh, occupation or industry in L.A., just from walking around, is landscapers. Yes. Those guys are working. Everybody's a landscape. Everywhere, yeah. every street I turn down, there's somebody uh, trimming a bush, uh, sure. mowing lawns. Uh, there's a lot. And people, you know, the houses are so close together. It's not like people have these like sprawling lawns. And yet there's landscapers every block. Yeah. These guys, they're running, a, they're running the town. They're working they're hard. They're running the town. Yeah. Hopefully, if you're out there and you're a landscaper, download the podcast. What we make that time fly right by. Here's a good invention: uh, the uh, the app that somehow like makes your uh, volume loud enough on your phone so you, it, over the lawnmower, over the weed whacker. Yeah, yeah. Has anyone done that yet? No, that'd be good. That's a good Shark Tank, uh, a niche Shark Tank invention. Soon we're going to be seeing billboards for landscapers uh, in LA. Like uh, they're really. You know, award nominated. Uh, they're the people that make this town run. Yes, for Otherwise, sure. Otherwise, there'd be like uh, it'd be like Wrigley Field. They get their choice of uh, of water when they go to a meeting. They're doing great. And then my third one. This is not a new one, uh, but uh, I it, again, if if you wa- side streets, you end up seeing like these uh, beautiful neighborhoods. Some of the best land. Mm-hmm. In New in L.A. in the world in the country is in L.A. You walk down any side street, you're going to see like a beautiful house, a bunch of beautiful cars, a very as we talked about, well manicured, uh, you know, yeah. lawn and everything. But the main streets, shithole. Yeah. Right. Right. There's all the ma- all the main streets: Melrose, Sunset, Santa Monica, whatever. It, literally, you're driving through a shithole, yeah. and then you turn down a side street. Aristotle, million do- our million dollar, our, our Angelino is enjoying. Yeah, this, million yes. dollar listing on the right, but going straight. Yeah, shithole, skid row. It's yeah. like laundromats. Well, that's the big joke about um, if, from the song "I Love L.A.," which obviously has become. It's one of the songs like "Born in the USA," where people don't listen to. The they don't lyrics, actually know what it's, and about. they don't know that it's like a satire of how bad L.A. is. And he starts naming the streets like. 
Sixth Street, which is not like a good street, yeah. but it's just like you know the idea of someone loving Sixth Street in L.A. is comical. That's yeah, I, but yeah, yeah. And I had a, uh, I was walking home late last night. Probably shouldn't have done it in yeah. L.A., but uh, I wanted to get a uh, club soda. And I went to a gas station mini mart, which there are a bunch of them. Yeah. And the door was locked, but the guy was in the booth. So I was like, hello, open the door. I want yeah. He said, no, you tell me what you want through the, through the cash window and I'll get it for you. Yeah. Never experienced that before. In no, my life. that's a new, yeah. Well, that's because the only other people besides you who are walking are people there to and, But I didn't want to be a dick and be like, uh, I don't like this brand. Yeah. I don't want Seagram's. Yeah. You're looking for a Schweppes. But I just took it. Um, but, so that uh, was new. Yeah. But uh, Aristotle, you, those three, you agree? Disagree? Yeah. He's nodding. Hollywood he, is like the most shithole. Yeah, you were in the, sh- the shithole. Yeah. There are certain times, like, if you, like, drive, if you're, like, r- driving around the right corner of Sunset or, like, something else and you see, like, a lamp or you're just like, oh, this seems, like, pretty majestic, like, pretty, like, Yeah, you well, know, obviously, like, like, Rodeo cool. Drive. Sure, stuff, but, like, but... also, like, you know... I, I'm trying to think, you know, but like, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of like uh, love for like Olympic Boulevard, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, but I just thought it was interesting, like, but you take the side street and you're seeing these beautiful yeah. sprawling sure. houses and, and properties. But anyway, I'm enjoying New York, uh, LA. I, it's just as a New Yorker, it's very hard to not make these observations. Yeah. Well, you're, you're an observing. I'm going to write some comedy person. premises. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Original. Yeah, original jokes. Let's see how white guys dance. No, um, we uh, this uh, we have a great guest coming up. In a white minute. guys bite so, their lip. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the white man's overbite. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's take a break and then we'll be right back with um, probably one of the most exciting guests we've had on the show ever. Right? I can't wait. Okay, we'll be right back. Big surprise. For you, the listeners of Sorry I've Been So Busy, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. You can download any book you want. Uh, You could download Jensen Karp's book, Kanye West Owes Me $300, his great memoir about uh, being a uh, white uh, teen rapper. Uh, We had Jensen uh, on the podcast to talk about his book, and uh, it was awesome, and uh, he's a super interesting guy. So check that out. To download your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B for your free audio book. All right, welcome back. We're with our guest. Andrew, please introduce our guest. Oh, man, I'm so excited to have this guy uh, on the show uh, he was my host on Big Morning Buzz Live for uh, I, I say two years, but it, it I think, you're rounding up. I like it though. Yeah, to, let's uh, you know multiple seasons. Uh, obviously, formerly of 98 degrees, currently of 98 degrees, and uh, just one of the one of the best dudes ever, Nick Lachey. We actually we woke up together every day. For we did a good two years. At like, what time? Very special. Uh, not as not as early as it. I guess we it got been. it down to a science. So by the time you came on, it wasn't. And also, you're like a dude. Like you don't need ha- too much hair and makeup. Not not, not extensive hair and makeup. Just some. So it was a later there. call time. <laughs> yeah, what time? I didn't be there at seven o'clock. I think during so your terrible. era. Oh, not that's terrible. pretty reasonable. Yeah, not yeah. terrible. Not and terrible. you would travel in with uh, Dylan Unger. <laughs> that's right. Who was our a- 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 star AP? We were we were uh, both on the on the Upper West Side, and and I uh, I found out the poor guy was like getting on the subway and and uh, and schlepping down to Times Square every day, and I literally lived make a block and a half away from him. Like, dude, just come over to the building. We'll grab the car service together and go down. So yeah, so for the last yeah. however many months we. Uh, but like for an AP on a partner. show like that, it's like yeah, I'm fucking rolling with the host. Yeah, <laughs> and like you're probably on your best behavior for like the first two weeks, and then like everything gets casual. You're well, just Dylan like, was a big sports Nick, guy. move over. He was a big sports guy too. So like that, he was my he was my connection to the, to the New York sports world. So I'd hear about the Rangers yeah, all the yeah. way down from 97th Street to Times Square. Square every day he's he loves it there was no but it, it was uh, rare like on the show that you would get to do like deep sports stuff so it'd be like get that out of the way exactly. in the car on the way there exactly i knew i was gonna be talking zero sports during during uh, any part of the show so yeah I, during your cooking segments and or, uh, or my pole dancing uh, or the makeovers for burlington <laughs> coat factory <laughs> <laughs> there were there were no uh, there was no sports allowed so uh, yeah we we, we took yeah. care of it all on the, on the every car once right in a while we squeezed one into the hot topics at the top and it landed with a uh, a very disastrous thud. No one no one wanted yeah. to hear me talk about sports, much to my chagrin. And you're like a big 
like, huge. C- Cincinnati, right? Is the is... I, I'm sadly I'm from Cincinnati, not right. sadly from Cincinnati, but sadly a fan of Cincinnati sports because it's been a brutal, it's been a brutal lifetime. Really, all all the best Cincinnati sports stuff happened before well, I was even I born. Mean, or... I mean, we're Philly, so it's pretty. We kind of yeah. we, we feel yeah, you. but you guys squeezed the World Series in there. We squeezed That's the true. World Series, and we had you know the Sixers made the finals uh, like ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Eagles made the Super Bowl. We have they four. They did, 2008. They were yeah. there. They were there. Yeah, we have four it. bad teams instead of just how many? Is two, I guess, would be since. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, we only got two. But you guys just suffered that heartbreak, what, two seasons ago, the Vontez Burfecht game? That was, that was uh, in my lifetime, that was as, as heartbreaking a loss as I've ever been a part of. It I remember brutal. being in Austin, Texas with you. We were at South by Southwest, and it was during March Madness. Yep, yep. And... You had a couple beers in you, and uh, plus you're an, a very intense sports fan. Man, you were punching walls. You were very. Well, it was. A, it was not a, in a bad way. Not it was in a like close a close game. It was. A, yeah, it was, it was, it was the Bearcats nail-biter. and uh, and Purdue. I think. Yeah. First round and uh, and I'm yeah. Like, I love sports, but man, Nick is really into his team. I've been I've been known to get a little uh, carried away. I love it. My That's wife awesome. loves it. Well, in that in that Pittsburgh game, I you know when. Uh, when we make, kind of threw the touchdown, what we thought was going to be the winning touchdown, yeah. AJ, AJ Green gets in the end zone. I scream so loud that my son starts crying hysterically. Yeah. And, and my, wife, my wife just looks at me and she's like, are, really? Are you proud are you of yourself? Are, yeah. you, look, are you scaring the kids? I'm like, no, buddy. This was a, this was a good he, scream. No, he's learning at an early age <laughs> to really get into sports. Followed a couple of minutes later by a horrified scream. How old are, how old are your kids? Uh, I've got three now. So I've got uh, Camden will be five in a yeah. couple of weeks. And then Brooklyn's two and a half. And, okay. uh, and Phoenix is... Eight months today. Actually. Wow, because I have a two and a half year old, and I've been I've been debating about like, you know, I I was very excited when he was first born. Oh, I got him his first uh, Eagles jersey. You know, watch football games with him on Sunday, and then there's a, also a part of me was like, do I really want to sign him up for this? Like, yeah. maybe I should just ba- maybe I should just let him. You know, I mean, obviously he's going to decide what he's into or whatever. But then I was like, I don't know if I want to force this on him. It's just a lifetime of misery and like getting weird stares and like do I and like am I going to bail on this thing that I have to do because to watch this thing? And I'm like, I don't I don't think I want him. Yeah, I've had the same internal uh, internal debate. Like, do I really do I really want to subject him to to what I've been subjected to? But yeah. then on the same, you know, on the, on the other side of it, you know, misery loves company, and, he, and, and sure you need some you need some and support. Every yeah. kid loves to root for the team their dad, you know, their dad roots for, and everything like that. Well, I mean, the the, the other, but he's got LA too. Well, I would say the alternative here is the Rams. I mean, really, do you, you're yeah. picking your poison here. A lot of people are calling them. A, uh, they they might surprise some people. That, that you, would be the only way they would be good. Let me tell you something. I, I had I, I was so amped to see because other than the Bengals, for whatever reason, the Rams were always my other team growing up, and they yeah. were, they've always been horrible, just like the Bengals. But I was so excited. So I, I, they were coming back to town. I went and got season tickets last year. You know, went down there to the Coliseum, did the whole thing. It was the most unwatchable <laughs> yeah. brand of football it was you like an ever. Expansion team. It, literally, the tailgating was the best part of of the entire experience. It was so bad that I bailed this year. I said I can't do it. Do anymore. you miss? And then the Raiders. Moved, well, you know the it's Raiders. A, it's a weird time to be in LA. Well, the Raiders have been in Oakland for yeah for the last. But still, time. it's like LA adjacent. Well, I mean, you know, Vegas is LA adjacent too. True, so for true, Raiders true. fans here, I mean, it's like you either get on the it's Southwest. The Chargers are coming here too. The Chargers, the are, yeah, right, right. The yeah, the tra- which is which is just bizarre. That's I, weird. I'm I, always going to call them the San Diego Chargers. It's like I, I feel like I feel like for the for the Chargers moving to LA, it's almost like when the Winnipeg Jets moved to Phoenix. You know, it's like yeah. really. I mean, yeah. Canadians right. love their hockey, and you're gonna you move your team to Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, the and then desert, like weirdly, no like Nashville, the the Nashville Predators fans are like the most rabid in the NHL now. Like they have like a whole like they they've embraced the team, they've embraced hockey. Well, Nashville is such an up and coming like you know city, and and they've yeah. only got two major sports too. You know, the Predators yeah. being one of them. So I can understand why they're so. They're and so you're also up. a USC fan because you 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 went to. You sp- that's the yeah. I went yeah. to USC, uh, so it's not all Cincinnati. No, well, you know, I'm a I'm a Cincinnati Bearcat fan. I'm a, obviously the Bengals and Reds, but yeah, wherever you go to school, I think you're a, you're a fan of. So USC's yeah. uh, the lone bright spot in my, and even that, I think we had to give back as Reggie you Bush. Didn't we? Were roommates right. with Steve Sarkeesian, or you knew him? Yeah, so so Sark and I were freshmen the same year, and uh, we were both in. He was in the other suite. There were two suites on the seventh floor of our dorm, and he was in the other one. But we all That's hung so out. Dope. So. And where is he coaching now? He's the he's the uh, offensive coordinator for the Falcons now. So cool. So, oh yeah. So he's uh, he's got Matty Ryan, and yeah. yeah. No, he's a great guy. He had a tough time a couple years ago here, obviously, but he's uh, he's a great guy and a brilliant coach, and he'll be yeah. fine. It'd be awesome if the Falcons made it back. They deserve to. They really they had do. a rough go. You know, I read uh, they don't refer to it as the Super Bowl. They refer to it as their last game. 
Mm, like in all team meetings, yeah. they never say the uh, yeah. okay. Like in the Super Bowl, it's in our last game, one game losing streak. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty brutal, though. I yeah. mean, you can you can you can say whatever you want, and you can call it whatever you want, but everybody in their mind knows that they blew the Super Bowl. Right. Yeah. That's got to be a hard thing to get past the next year. Um, it'll be interesting to see because that's a tough division too. I mean, Tampa Bay looks like they could come out of nowhere and be like really we, legit this year. The yeah. Saints are always still kind of hanging around. People say Panthers, the, the Eagles, maybe. No, but uh, I remember watching the game. It, uh, Jamie and I, we didn't do anything for the game. I think we had just gotten back from traveling, and uh, we just watched it ourselves. And like, sec- th- it was such a blowout. She like went into the bedroom to start watching other things, oh, yeah. and then the second half starts, and I start freaking out. And she's like, "What is going on? Yeah. What is happening out there?" And then she ended up joining me for like the rest of the game. And if you had a every- child, you would have made them cry. Yes, a hundred percent. I made I just- children in other apartments cry. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I- I'm just glad I had. Yeah, and there was no. No dog in that fight, you know, so to speak. I, uh, yeah. If, if that was your team, uh, it would have been that would have hurt. That's Pittsburgh Steelers, Cincinnati Bengals. Now, does your competitive? How does your competitive nature work when you're on like uh, Battle of the Network Stars, which I watched? <laughs> I DVR'd. I was rooting for you and well, Vanessa. You know, uh, thankfully Vanessa and I, we tend to be uh, competitive, and, and thankfully we were on the same team, so there was a there was a, uh, a mutual interest there. Um, but that was a, you know, it's, it's one of those shows where you get in there and you want to do everything. Yeah. But at the same time, they didn't let you do be, every event, right? Yeah. You, you, you're trying to be kind of gracious yeah. and like, you know, you let did other people do the some track stuff. and field, right? I ran. So I, yeah, I ran the first leg, I guess, against Tracy Bingham. Right. And I'm like, well, if I don't just smoke her right out of the, <laughs> exactly. out of the gate, I'm gonna look like the biggest chump retire. ever. <laughs> and I literally, to this day, that was probably two months ago. My, my right hamstring <laughs> yeah. still, still yeah, has yeah, not the, recovered the from the ice that. tub. No, I wanted to do the uh, the obstacle course because that's kind of the cool, you know, the that's cool the thing. iconic one. Yeah. But uh, Jack Osborne, who was on my team, is like, you know, he he goes Crushed to these, it. he but he goes to these competitions all yeah, the time. Yeah, the tough mutters and stuff. So I'm like, this, you know, of course, and everything he's been this. through, it was like a really cool story. Oh that man, they made out. that was uh, yeah, and, and he ended did up they dunk tank you? I did get dunked. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was awesome, and it was high, man. It was. And then I'm, not, I'm not scared of heights, but that was a lot higher than people can appreciate yeah. on TV. It was not a fun... Well, we shot on a roof here in L.A. We did. Pretty high. That was pretty high. That was high. A what? helipad. Where, wait, was when I was on the buzz, when you were out here in L.A., was was that with... I don't, I don't I think even remember. I think it was remember. with Carrie. Oh, okay. It was just with Carrie. Yeah, we were yes. like poolside at a mansion. I only met we, you. We, we resemble each other, though. I can understand yes. how you... How you yeah. Your a, pecs you, and her pecs are pretty <laughs> Well, same. hopefully we have a better luck than when Carrie was on the podcast and I had to... So, uh, uh, yeah, Carrie came on the you'll, podcast. You'll, get, and, you'll and like understand this. Five to ten so minutes like, into the podcast, Matt looks I, at his I, phone. I, and it's, I have like eight million texts and basically what happened was there was some sort of emergency with the nanny and I was oh. closer to home than my, my uh, wife and so I just literally bailed, and, the, and he said, "Thank God, it was a guest who was like basically, you know." Was, yeah. I, I, I spent, I'd, I'd, I spent again two years probably, you know, talking yeah, he to her every day. As opposed to like, so if I, I had brought in a guest who was a friend of mine, and then I had to bail, and you would have been, been like, totally uh, lost or whatever. But it was, and literally, they just, you know, they did the rest. Of, I, I just snuck out. And you I think this the is podcast, the first time so. we're telling the story on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, we haven't talked. About we it never yet. explained why you weren't on. Why the rest I was not on the last. No, but it was funny too because the, the no, yeah. Matt looked at his phone and he he gave me like the one finger up, like give me a minute, and he stepped out, and then he just never returned. It was yeah, and I just had to finish the podcast. It'd be really awkward if the ratings suddenly just skyrocketed. I know, right? People love Goldstein. People's dials turn to the right. Oh my yeah, we we killed off that character. Wait, and yeah. then so and then also this summer you did a uh, uh, um, uh, Hollywood game night, which yes. they have expanded. By the way, they have like built a whole second studio with like physical games. That's a uh, that's it's 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 nerve wracking that show because you, you play all these games you know growing up and you you play them in your own game nights or whatever but when you when you're in that setting you know it, it, yeah. there's so much pre- you, you panic. Well, there was that conveyor belt up. game that was like with the boxes. Yeah, that yeah. was insane. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. And though. that was you versus uh, Vanessa. It was proud to say they that, like to uh, pit you two against each other. I was other. victorious in that one. I think I she hold choked. the distinction. I might be wrong. I've never I haven't researched this, but I think I hold the distinction of I have. Uh, produced both i mean i i've produ- i produced vanessa on trl and i produced you on the buzz so i worked for both and who's your favorite i mean i mean come on it's even competitive now i spent so much time with you it's like not even appropriate 
It wasn't appropriate. Net, it, was, it was it was very inappropriate. I mean, I was like low writer on the totem pole in the TRL days, so I I didn't have too much interaction with Vanessa, but I did. You know, I was on the floor like holding cue cards for her and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's very important, very important very back important. in the day. Uh, and then uh, yeah, but then you and I spent many many mornings trying to figure out a story for the time. And you know, it's so funny. It's all come full circle because now that we have the podcast, we're like 80 episodes in. We are constantly trying to figure out, okay, what's the story for the top of the show, which was your everyday, you know, we were just in that room like throwing darts at the wall. My what'd, fa- what'd you do last night, Nick? My favorite my favorite thing is, is uh, Andrew came up with this, This I think it was you that came up with the brilliant idea to sing the, the Good Morning America ticker across the street. So the, TR, the uh, MTV studio is, uh, you know, it, if you look out the windows in the corner, it looks right onto the Good Morning America ticker. And so I said Nick should uh, sing because we, a, a, uh, we had our band leader. Uh, Rob Lewis, shout out to Rob, and uh, I was like, Nick should sing, improvise, and sing the the headlines. Yeah, which was you know it was a lot of fun and 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 very spontaneous. But then you you get this horrible headline, you know, <laughs> ISIS behead, you know, and I'm like there's no way I could sing that. That's appropriate. Nick, <laughs> Nick gave like a soulful rendition <laughs> of like somebody like let's switch to sports. And yeah. you start reading the sports ticker. Yeah. And you come back to it when yeah. it mellowed out I, a little bit. I don't think you could do that bit now. Bomb blast, I Oklahoma think, City. I think, I think the the uh, the news today. Oh, the no. news today is so different. It wouldn't work oh. at all. You know. Brutal. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It was a good bit. It was. It was it fun. It was a good bit. You're it was always nerve-wracking I, on live TV to do that. I've always yeah. said, you're a great idea, man. You can. If someone's like, hey, we need 10 ideas, boom. I try. You got, you got them. Only Joel Solomon's better than me. Joel is he's the, the He's the prolific idea guest. generator. Yeah. He's the most prolific idea generator I've ever worked yeah. with. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, the, we had, we just had a lot of fun. I mean, we talk about it on the pod all the time. It's like these shows, like The Buzz, and he worked on a daily for the fu- for Fuse and stuff. They end up being so much fun because you're just throwing shit at the wall to see to try to get viewers to try well, to get also, people to notice you. It's not, it's true. I mean, and and the think the freedom we had on that show to do kind of whatever the heck we wanted and and shout and, out to Shane and, and and yeah, I mean, it was just a good group of people to work with every day. I mean, everyone I think genuinely enjoyed each other and yeah. we just kind of had fun and went for it and. Uh, you know that's what made it so so cool to be a part of. You kind of took it for granted a little. I mean, at least I did. I was like, man, what a grind! I'm flying back and forth from LA, you know, pretty much every week. And yeah. then, so the first cycle that you were on, you were here. You were, in, I mean, you were in New York, right, right, right. You had the apartment, you, and then you were maybe flying home on the weekends, maybe not. No, or, we, no, Vanessa was with you. Yeah, Sorry. My, my wife and and at the time we yeah. only had one kid. We all, we, you know, we lived in an you apartment there, and it was it was awesome. I mean, we we loved the city and, and loved being there. But yeah. then she actually got pregnant while we were there. Uh, and so when we came back in the fall, you know, decided, hey, right. you know, she wanted to be out here with so her doctor. So then we would do two shows on Thursday, and then you would bounce and do the, the Nick Lachey flight yep, yep. cross country, and then you'd be back miraculously Monday. Amazing, too, that I never had a travel, you know what you I mean? You never had a travel Never had a too. travel issue, never had a canceled flight. Never always had to make Michelle Buteau host the show. Never, never came to that. I was always worried if I missed one, she'd take over and I'd never get my spot back. It'd that be was a, the other. You were flying commercial. It'd be like the Drew so. Bledsoe, Tom Brady situation. Yeah, you, exactly. You, you, yeah. Can't let so it. you were flying. I mean, you were, and you you were flying commercial, so anything could have happened, really. Well, Andrew wasn't. Yeah. He wouldn't let me use his plane. So no, yeah. I, I had no yeah. choice. But I, to, I used to do similar it. deflated balls as well. I I used to do this. I mean, I've had uh, now twice where I moved out here for a job and then uh, my wife was back in New York. And then this was both before kids, but and then moved back to New York for a job and was like com- you know doing that like red eye commute on the weekends and it's uh it's brutal it's uh, like you, not you know we we'd work you know monday two on tuesday two on wednesday and I, yeah. by the time i could hit jfk on wednesday night i was dead to the world I just well we out. we'll get into your day now but what was what was your like flight routine uh, when i flew yeah well i always flew back on sunday yeah from la so my flight routine there was get on board and watch NFL football literally yeah. all the way. Well, that's there. why you did JetBlue so you would have the best. To, so you've got the I satellite TV yeah. and you're like recline, you know, the the good oh. reclining seat. I was in the, I was in they just rolled out mint. They're they're like, yeah. oh, it was awesome. I'd sit there and I'd have, you know, have a few gin and tonics and watch some That's great. You, know, great, NFL you don't football. have your wife like telling you like you can, come it's on. Best. I take the Sunday paper and just read the paper like that's an great. old man. Yeah. Watch some football. Five hours later, you're home. Have some food. You know, rolling rolling to New York, and then on the on we the all felt back, bad for you. You were living the life. Oh, it was awesome. I know, living right? the dream. Awesome. You you realize too when you when you you know, start to at least you know I do with three kids now. Oh a, my fl- God. a flight is actually it's it's the biggest blessing ever because yeah. no one can touch you. You know, you can just you sit yeah. there, have a few drinks, watch a movie, watch some TV, relax. It's it's the it's like the untouchable right. time. I've, I've said this before. I ju- I mean, I just said this, but like you know, 
uh, you know, hey, a flight without my kid, you know, put me in coach between two fat guys and I'm fine. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's relaxing. <laughs> it is. You no, know, it really, when you're flying with your kids, a whole other story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's uh, at times. Well, what was that flight like after doing all the shows then Thursday afternoon? You're like running to JFK, get on the plane. I was, I mean, I'd literally get on, I'd have a few drinks and, and have like a, a couple bites to eat and then just crash the yeah, rest of the flight. You're out. So, so coming back Sunday though, then you wouldn't take the red eye because you you can't. I, I found that you can't take the red eye if you have. Have you taken the red eye and then worked the next day? Can you? do I that? have, and it's brutal. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I, w- I would always take the flight that got in around midnight. Yeah. Um, and there were a couple times where we had weather, you know, in JFK or whatever, and so I didn't get into like three. Yeah. And, and you know, have to get up at six. Yeah. Um. But yeah, for the most part, you get in at midnight, get a decent night's sleep, and then you you know you roll into work the next day, and you're you're right back on schedule. It worked really well, honestly. What uh, what did you get into like when you would leave the show? Like, let's say on a Monday, we did one. Yep. I'd always go back to the. Uh, I had a little apartment, you know, there yeah. in New York, and I'd always go back and and you know get a little workout in. Yeah. Um, and then typically, you know, I never really napped because I'm not a big napper. Like I'd rather just plow through. So usually get a workout in, run down the river. Right, uh, and then you know, uh, hit a little bar for Monday Night Football that night. So there you go. Nice. Watch, watch the first half, only the first half. Yeah, because you got to get up the next morning. So and then watch be... the Bachelor. I know how you do. That it, is though. the one thing I will say. This for you know sports guys like us. That's the one thing about a morning show that just you know it's brutal, especially in New York, a town that is you know. Oh my god! Everything games so, go so late. Everything's so late night too. Like dinners and stuff. So you, I had to learn to really like be responsible because it's easy to get carried away and have a few too many yeah. and then. The next morning, stay for just, the end of the game. Next morning is just a nightmare. Well, the our we would walk in and we would always try to figure out like who stayed up and watched the end of whatever game. Like what happened in yeah. that game? Did you see this story? What you know? There was a lot of that when I was, uh, um, uh, when my kid was like real little. I don't know if you ever did this, but I was in charge of one of the middle of the night uh, feedings, and so that was like my. I would wake up at like three a.m. And just like bottle Sports Center, like that was like uh, you know, just like it was the only. It worked out perfectly because it was the only thing. Like you can't get into like you're. It's three in the morning and you're trying to like feed and burp a baby, so you can't oh. like. Y- y- it's not like hey, I'm gonna binge. I'm gonna use this time to like catch up on Breaking Bad. Like it doesn't. You, no. Yeah, Sports Center is the only thing that I could focus on. But I was like, oh, I was. I, Honestly, I thought when I had a kid, I would pay less attention to sports. But it was a time where I was—I right, knew who say. won every hockey game. I don't need to be an hockey right. fan. I'm just like you knew the whole reason. like PGA yeah. leaderboard. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was very strange. I, I just—I used to just bottle feed in the middle of the night. We used to call that the dream feed, and I'd just like literally walk in, stumbling in, in the dark, and feed him in the dark, and just hope he went right back to sleep. Yeah, that's what I should have done, but uh, I'm not coordinated enough to do that in the dark. <laughs> Two things before we uh, get into your current day. One is uh, you mentioned the pole dancing, but it, is that the worst thing we made you do? Oh, man. The list of bad things you made me do is, is, is extensive. I, well, you uh, burped me as a baby. That was pretty traumatizing. I think I had to actually you and, diaper um, you. Uh, the guy from Party of Five. Had to die- Vanderbeek? No. Uh, Scott Wolf. Scott Wolf. Okay. I always go Vanderbeek chat- wasn't. Vanderbeek was later, but yeah, it was like this thing with. It was like an integration, and it was like baby burping. And yeah, they dressed pretty, me up like a baby. That was pretty true. I said yes to everything. So if you, if Shane was like, you're dressing up as a baby, and they're going to burp you with like baby powder and shit. I, I the one the one the one uh, memory I have most most vividly is I think it was um, was it Drew Sedora? We had somebody we were playing that we were playing like a by the window. Uh, what do you call that? Where you miming game? You know what I mean? Yeah. Charades, charades. Type yeah, but of game. it was um, somebody's in Times Square and Nick's in the window. And you're doing the charade, and the, it, it was like a can the person downstairs guess what they're doing in the window? So, okay. so she had sports was her her theme, and she's doing all the sports. And I'm kind of standing there waiting for my turn, and she goes to 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 mimic bowling and swings back and just cracks me right in the nuts. It was like a Johnny Carson bit. I mean, it it <laughs> but was, it was r- completely real. Hit him right in oh, the balls. Wow. And he had to like toss to break. I mean, so solidly too. It was not a it was not a graze. It was a full on yeah. You get that awful feeling. Four in knuckles right in the. Oh, it's bad. And then and you were still planning on having more children at this point. So uh, at that yeah at that yeah, point so yeah. you needed those. Well everything, everything those. worked out. Okay good. All right. And then I was just gonna. Uh, you guys have the Christmas album coming out in, soon. Yeah, you said in the intro. Yeah, formerly and current uh, currently member of Ninety Eight Degrees, which is which is well, true. We toured last summer. We just kept trying to reunite you. You know what? It worked. It worked. Honestly, we're having more fun now than, than we did That's great. back in, in the heyday. And we toured last summer and, and uh, had a great time with it. So we said, hey, let's do something again this year. So we literally just a couple weeks ago finished our um, our Christmas record, which is going to come out um, 
mid October, um, and then we're doing a Christmas tour as well. Thirty one cities uh, starting like early November. Are you in tour shape? Am I in tour shape? You look good. I, I'm trying, man. I'm training. I'm. I'm. I'm going. Luckily, keep you don't have together. too much choreography. You have to do. You just <laughs> no. We, you we, know, we, use your finger to travel the stars. Well, this is always, you know, this is a different kind of show, too, because it's, it's kind of a holiday theme, so yeah, it's yeah. a little more theatrical. A lot of red sweaters. You know, we've got, like, a lot of red sweaters. We've got an intermission. Yeah. You know, it's more like a, like an arts center type of show, so it'll be a little different for what us. What are the fans like these days? Is it mostly fans from back in the day, or is it, like, new? It's mo- it's mostly from back in the day. Yeah. But what's cool about it, though, is, that, like, they're now having their kids, and yeah. you see them come to the show, you know, with their kids, and it's like this passing the torch thing you know like hey this is the you know the group that your mommy used to to go see and so you start to get yeah. younger fans through kind of your older fans if that makes any sense but sure. yeah but it's 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 amazing to me the the you know how how loyal the fan base still is and they still come out and and support and so it's been cool it's been really cool i love it there's i mean now there's that show boy band yeah it's funny i was just actually i was just over on the lot where they're shooting boy band oh, wow. and the girls the girls are literally lined up out in front on on uh on beverly boulevard you know waiting to obviously go in and be in the I audience al- i always love the you know we occasionally on the show we uh, backstreet boys whatever who people from different bands new sure. kids came, and just to see like the camaraderie between like the unspoken camaraderie yeah. between all of, all of you guys because you know as fans we're just like oh they probably all hate each other and like you and like jordan knight were like cool as hell yeah and you well, did that you did that improvised song like throwing the break well yeah we just toured with those guys we just toured with so, uh with new kids not long before that and of course we all you know backstreet boys and nsync was kind of our era so we you know we all ran into each other yeah and, and i'm not gonna say there weren't times when it was like a little bit of a sure. rivalry, but it was never stupid. It was never, you know, yeah. never hateful. It's just cool to see, you know, like for us, we're like watching on set like you guys and, and new kids and, you know, that bit where you sang, you improvised the oh, coming, it's going co- to break. coming back from break. It was like, it was, <laughs> for me, it was awesome. Yeah. I, I always made the joke, I wish I grew up in Orlando, so being in a boy band would have been like an option. Right. It was either like paper route or Yeah, or I, like, we're, yeah. Yeah. The, I don't know. You used you to, were you guys were by the, the way, Orlando. I don't know if you know this, but junk, he used but. to do the um, back when he used to do a lot of stand up. He would do it. You would do your boy band yeah. moves bit. Have you ever seen? No. Do you know about? Well, that? I always tried to. P- I always tried to pitch it, but yeah, it was, you know, it's like uh, you got to cra- always got to crouch. A lot of you gotta crouch. sing and crouch. Well, there's, there's a croucher. Yeah, you gotta have a croucher in the group. Somebody's a croucher, so your so your groin is eye, eye level with yeah. the girl and the girls in the audience. So the, yeah. you have the croucher, and then it was like I I can't. It's a vis, It's not a. It's for a sure. visual medium, but yeah. it was like the the walk the walk and slowly turn around with your hands outstretched. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Nick, you hit all the moves whenever he would perform. There you go. They, they were they were the few point and, few and far between. The point was a big one. Yeah. The point with a slight head, you know, that, head knob going at the same time. That's you know? good. See, Nick's then, got. Then, then he, you throw the other side in. He was. I pitched a million bits around uh, boy band dance moves, and uh, they all got killed. And yet, but well, I just think the fact that he still wants to come and hang out with you after you pitched all those is probably a victory. The fact that you didn't annoy him enough uh, with your boy band bits that you. It took me a couple of days to, to actually <laughs> wrap my head around the idea. I said, yeah, yeah, all right, I'll go down there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe on our booze cruise to after our final season. Uh, I was involved in a dance circle with your brother Drew, <laughs> which was like a highlight. That was this, awesome. So I try to do this this cruise after every season, take the whole staff out and everything. And, and the day we scheduled this one, it was like a typhoon in New York, and yeah. so we're all we're all cruising around, you know, the Statue inside of Liberty inside the inside the Circle Line boat. Like we yeah. couldn't even be on the decks, but <laughs> it uh, just, yeah, yeah, it's fun. You 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 and boats because your bachelor party was kind of like that too. Exactly. We took a boat, we out, took a boat and out. We had to take it in early. Because Lake Travis in Austin, and it started like th- oh, nice. torrential thunderstorm, and I was like in the uh, the the tube that was being pulled. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. Uh, it was actually funny because we. Uh, uh, there was like 12 of us and we met in the lobby and he wasn't even there yet and like 10 out of 11 voted like no we're not going to go on the boat like it's supposed to pour today and then Andrew comes out and we're like yeah we voted we're not going to he's like no we're doing the boat and he's like I guess we're doing we're the boat on the it's boat. his bachelor party so we got to do it yeah. I was like fuck it who cares yeah. we'll do it so we got there we had like 10 minutes of sunshine before torrential downpour but it was fun um, um, and, we get, yeah, let's oh, get no, into your what day. Were you gonna say? No, I was just going to say uh, we'll get into your day. Do you want to pick a specific day from this week, or was there that was interesting, or was there like you know what, man? Do you want to give us a typical day in your life? I, what it's I, like? I, what I've found with with three kids is every day it just it's like it's Groundhog Day. Every uh-huh. day, feels okay, like, like yeah. the same day. So, so what, when are you waking up? I wake up uh, six twenty every day. Is there and, an alarm? Uh, there is an alarm. There is an alarm. It's not a child. It's a, it's a 
No, I, you know what? I, I figured out that in order for me to, to be sane, I need to have like 15, 20 minutes before the kids we get We hear up. that a lot. Yeah. So I can like wrap my head around what I got to do today, right. get, you know, get the milk prepped, yeah. make some coffee, get that in my system, maybe answer a few emails. You know, what you kind know, of coffee? What kind of coffee? Well, that's uh, the big coffee very, drinker here. Very, very dark, usually like Italian roast Starbucks. Uh-huh. And I, I make it strong. So it's like crack basically nice yeah. and i need it yeah um i'm 100 percent addicted no, sure. no question about it um but yeah no i need i need that and you know let the dog out do all that stuff and then usually uh the baby uh our, our eight month old you know gets going first so make his bottle get him ready um and then my daughter usually is, is second she's still in a crib at two and a half so. i would guess i've never been to your house i would guess there's a a tv a kitchen tv situation happening there's no, it's funny. There are a lot of TVs in my house. The kitchen is the one place there is no TV. All right. Well, there's I, no TV. Okay. I'm wrong. No? Wow. There's always a laptop. Okay. So, you so can, you're, check, you're checking scores and, what, and highlights. Well, and also, too, when you live on the West Coast, you know, at 630, you know, East Coast has already gotten going. So yeah. you know, I've got emails to answer already and yeah, things, yeah. You know, a little business to take care of. I usually get my daughter um, and, and my, my newborn, or eight-month-old now, uh, kind of go upstairs and get them at the same time and carry them both down and... You know, throw my daughter down in front of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or whatever's going on, <laughs> sure. and then uh, and then feed the baby, and then my son, who's now become very independent, just kind of gets himself out of bed, and you you hear the, the the thud of him jumping out of bed, you know, on the on the ceiling above, and then he'll he'll kind of wander down, and that's the morning, man. Is he a cereal kid? Or is he like what's he eating? Every day is different. Uh, you gotta make waffles. It's, it's uh, he's not a waffle guy. My my daughter likes waffles and pancakes, and she's become like the picky eater. But he's uh, he's either you know Cheerios and milk, eggs Classic. and eggs and toast, the stuff we like the most, or uh, <laughs> or eggs, rice, and soy sauce is big in our wow. is big in our house. We we you know my wife's yeah of course Filipino, so we've always pretty much got a, a rice cooker on the counter with warm rice. That's in like it. a bibimbap. It's it's so good. Yeah, and, that's and, awesome. And it's like you know, if you go to Hawaii and you get like the spam eggs and rice, oh, of course. And whole, so that's uh, that's what his other was favorite. the um, Cincinnati specific uh, breakfast uh, patty? Thing oh, that's that, uh, that you put on the burger at Lachey's. Yeah, that's Geta. Geta. G O E T T A. What is it? You got to hear about this. Well, it's like you guys have something similar. It's, scra- in it's like Scrapple. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like Scrapple, but better. <laughs> it's like spicy. It's uh, some of it's spicy, but yeah, it's, it's just it's like oats. And uh, and and oh, I've heard and of this. Pork. Yeah, and it's like rolled into a into a roll. Yeah, and then you just cut it and right because at Lachey's, which shout out to Lachey's in Cincinnati Sports Bar, right? Yep, still going strong. They have the burger and it's got get on. Of course, I asked him what, what's the burger like. So it's a it's a topping. It's not like a main. <laughs> You know what you can uh, you could either make it into a scramble. Yeah. Um, usually it's like you you you'll get it in like either a, like a rectangle patty or just yeah. a circular patty. But you know you just yeah right. It's, it's more very, like a, it's similar. It's, it's, like a, it's like a side. Did Cam go to camp this summer? Was there a yeah. camp situation? He loved it. He well it's just his his preschool. We, we has met camp. at camp. We talk about well, that's all, like sleepaway camp. Yeah. We did sleepaway yeah, yeah, camp, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying as a youngster, we both probably you probably did day camp as well at yeah. some point. Yeah. So yeah. was there a camp situation? Yeah, he loved it. It was uh, it was uh, you know every day different theme. You know, his preschool does a great job of like, hey, this week is space week, and so they would, one day they'd make like rockets, and the next day they'd make a solar system. That's great, and, you know. But he loved it, and then there was a little. They have a pool at their at their preschool too, so he did do like swim in Richmond. He's gotten really good in the, in the swimming. So where the swimmies? He uh, no, he's he's a uh, he's just jumping in. He's jumping in, I man. He's it. he's gotten really really good. Um, so yeah, he had a big time at camp. And then the middle, your daughter, the middle, the oh daughter, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. She's too young for a, a camp situation. She uh, actually went a couple days a week. Oh, believe, okay. it, believe it or not, she's going to start uh, preschool this year. Wow. Which yeah. blows blows my mind. I know, me, yeah, same age. So, so yeah. they, they the camp for her was kind of like they put her in the same group with the kids that she's going to be in preschool with yeah so she can start to get to know them and first time as a parent that you leave the room and like go to another little holding room right and then if the teacher comes you know your kids like having a breakdown meltdown you have to go and save them. Right. but thankfully she didn't have any of those so yeah it was uh, they both went to a little bit of camp this summer so what's getting out of the house like for you or what's the this is, also when does vanessa come down <laughs> Much much later. <laughs> Where's mommy? Uh, she's still sleeping. She's yeah. um, no, she comes down usually, you know, around eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. Um, but yeah, getting out of the house is—it's always that's the tricky thing, right? You got to get the breakfast in them, and yeah, and you know, get on the road, and uh, so it's it's you know, you get it down to a science, and somewhere in there, you got to make a lunch, and you got to you know, do all that stuff. Yeah. 
So, and then do you uh, often, are you able to like get work done at home or is it too crazy there? Or you just go, you're off somewhere usually. No, I mean, I can, I can kind of shut the door in my office and, and, you know, get some, get some peace and some space to get some stuff done. Yeah. But if you're, but if you're anywhere where the kids can see you, forget about it. You know, you know my, yeah. my son's at that age now where he's like, daddy, 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 right. daddy, the yes, recipe. son, daddy, yes, son, daddy. Why? Why? No. Well, and then and then he'll he'll get so excited, you know, we'll be in the car and, and he's super into cars. So we literally roll down the street. That's our thing on the on the way to school when I'm taking him to school or to camp. He'll name off every car on the road, you know. Wow. Toyota, Hyundai, Subaru. <laughs> and then he'll but he'll get so excited to go, Daddy, 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 daddy. And it's just like fifteen daddies in a row before he ever gets out what he wants to say. It's it's super cute. That's impressive that he can identify a Subaru. Is it based on yeah. the look of the car? Or based on the, the it's the symbols it's on the, the back. Symbols he's on he's the gotten uh, his, wow. like Uber, Lyft, Uber. <laughs> the Lyft. T- where are you? New York kid. Taxi. Taxi. Yeah. 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 Uh the tough one was was Mazda. Mazda and Acura. Oh yeah. Mazda's kind of they changed they've got like that little whale tail looking thing. Oh, so he knows the logos. Yeah, exactly. So oh, cool. he, he'll cool, see cool. the logo on the back of the car and he'll and uh, he'll name them off. I literally never knew the difference until 6 months ago between like a bulldozer, a steamroller, a, a digger, a, you know, and now I know them all. I can name them yep. a forklift. You know, I, I, if I was just like, whatever, that's like a truck of some kind. But you now, clearly read Good Night, Good Night Construction. Sure, site. of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Many times. Yeah, yeah. But now I that's know a, them all. So. That's a go. That's a go to. Yeah. Sure. In our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Little Blue Truck. Oh, my God. Another go to. Yes, yeah. Little Blue Truck leads the way. That's yes. the other one. Yeah. Of course. I could talk about this one. What's like the middle of your day like? If because there's a baby and the uh, are, you're out of the house, but maybe you're you know you know it's it's uh, middle of the like I found that pretty much if I want to get anything done it's got to be in the morning because um, in the afternoon you know whether it's school or camp it's over and the kids are home and Cam doesn't take a nap anymore which you know as a parent that's a that's a sad dark day when your kid right. gives up the nap because that's what? the no nap that's the time you can count on to get things done but um, so yeah usually my I try to get whatever I need to get done in the morning. Uh, whether it's working out or you know working or yeah. turning calls or whatever it is, Home Depot runs. Um, you know, get that done. Bed Bath right. and Beyond, if there's time. Bed Bath and Beyond, <laughs> a favorite in our family. Costco has become you know a, love it a favorite in our family. Um, so yeah, the afternoons are usually hanging with the kids. You know, once once Brooklyn gets up from her nap around three thirty, uh, we'll head outside and hit the swing set, hit the pool. Are you like the regimented nap? You know, like the specific time. Like feeding specific time, yeah. nap specific time. Yeah, we did the whole sleep training uh, routine, which you know, I mean, I don't really know any other way, but for us, it was it was awesome because the kids love. I mean, they they have no problem going to bed. It's like, hey, all right, time for nap. Let's do it, and they and get it. They go right down, and um, so yeah, it's worked. It's uh, it's worked really well for them. With uh, doing the album, was that here? Did you did you do that on location to get everybody together? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did the whole Christmas record out here. So uh, the other guys came came in, and, and uh, they all stay with you. That's how I imagine it. <laughs> that used to be the way it went <laughs> yeah. until until three kids came along, and then no, my Drew stayed with me, um, which is cool because then they can see their uncle Drew. Sure. Uh, but the other guys were in hotels, and and uh, yeah, we knocked it out in, in a couple of weeks. It didn't take long to record, but it was me. I dropped the drop cam off at camp. Literally go straight from camp to record from like ten to two, um, and then go back uh, back home and play dad. Uh, on the album, is it Christmas songs we know, or are there there's, originals? There's one original um, which we uh, which we wrote, but most of the album. Is that a lot of, of pressure writing a Christmas song? I mean, I, if you want it to be good, it's pressure, you know. Yeah, which we did. Okay, so, you know, you try to make it, you try to make it at least. Throw a, Somewhat Hanuk- catchy. Throw a Hanukkah one on there, buddy? <laughs> there is no Hanukkah oh, one, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. We thought about it. We thought about no, it. No, but that's good. That's um, cool. No, but it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, all the, I mean, all the songs that you, for Andrew's the most very part. Disapp- he's hiding it well, but he's very I'm, like, I'm broken. Tell. I'm yeah. broken. No, but it's got to be fun to, like, get back in there with uh, with the guys. It is. It is. Uh, you know, it, recording is different than being on stage. I mean, we love performing together, but recording's like a whole other, like, set of muscles, you know what I mean? So it's cool to get in there and create new music and... And uh, and do that thing. And when you're doing Christmas stuff, it's songs you know, for the most part you've sung, you know, your whole life or people you know, yeah. recognize. So there's a little bit of pressure to do it differently and, and you know, yeah, kind of create a cool. I mean, how many how many holiday records have been done over the years? You know, how many, how many times can Silent Night be reinvented? So you, it, it's kind of fun and pressure at the same time to say, hey, what's our take on right. Silent Night? Throw and, a rap verse into I mean, Winter you gotta, Wonderland. You gotta like you know you gotta like mix it up. <laughs> we did throw a little beatbox onto uh, on the first Noel. Who beatboxes in the group? No, but we had uh, Kevin from Pentatonix. Oh, that's great. He's great. Yeah. 
So he uh, he guessed it on the album and came on. Oh, who Bop. else is, is? Are there other? He was the only one. He was the only one. Got it. Yeah. Do you have a lot of music playing in your house? Yeah, well, you can imagine I'm a musician, and, yeah. and Vanessa is huge yeah, you in the play music. The, uh, and, trumpet and, and uh, no, play the saxophone. The saxophone. <laughs> we brought that back. Not very well either. Um, so yeah, we pretty much always have have music on, and as soon as we wake up, you know. The music I found goes on. that when because when I had a kid, I don't know about you, but I found that like you know when it was just me and my wife, the TV was always on in the background, and then when we had a kid, we didn't want the TV on in the background all the time. So like I started actually listening to a lot more music yeah. again. You like, guys bought a record you know, player. We bought a record player. You know where it was just like oh, it was nice to sort of get back into music. Almost. Yeah, yeah, music. I mean, it's definitely been a big big part of our uh, you know big part of our lives, and it always kind of has been. We just it's just always on. Sometimes on too much, but uh, yeah, but it's cool. What are, Knowing you, you have like the Sonos situation like this we do have a sonos yeah yeah it's so cool we it's do. like life-changing what uh i mean what are your evenings like then you know what it's it's uh it used to be i mean vanessa and i watched every movie uh you know you could possibly imagine to where we felt like we'd seen it and now i can't tell you the last movie i saw because by the time you get to the evening and you get the kids bathed and you get the kids in bed and you're you're done watching you know cloudy with a chance of meatballs for the 50th time <laughs> um and you sit down to have your own dinner because it's it's you know they eat at like five thirty. It's just too early for for us to eat. Yeah, and so I'm sure someday we'll sit down as a family and do that thing. But so then we eat around eight thirty or nine, and by the time that's done, you, you just you're ready to right hit the head, you know hit the head yeah. and start all over again. So evenings are pretty uh, pretty mellow. They usually involve a few bourbons. And, sure. uh, and Matt's a brown liquor drinker. Yeah, are you? Yeah. What's your, what's your from brown, work? What's your brown of choice? Uh, I'm very recently. I'm into the uh, God. What do you call it? The stuff that you got me. The pig's head. But the, no, wait. That's not that. The um, oh, head. That's no, cold cuts. It's from. Uh, I'm totally no. Well, it's like Wild uh, West. Oh yeah, Park West. Yeah, I like Park the Park West. West. Okay. That's good. Yeah. No, but I mean like just a straight up like a bullet bourbon or bullet rye yeah. will do the trick or you know something like that. Yeah, I like but, bu- bullet rye is good. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I'm going. I'm actually going to Kentucky uh, in October to do the with a couple of college friends to do the bourbon trail it's awesome man. yeah i'm very excited yeah so. we uh you know obviously cincinnati where i grew up is, is yeah. right you know right there in bourbon country so uh, i've actually i know that because the only time that i've ever been to kentucky is i once had a layover in the cincinnati airport which is actually in kentucky it is it is in one kentucky. of my uh one of my you know there's trivia tidbits that, you know uh, well you'll come come down to lachaise while you're in town oh yeah I, I you know what we were thinking about flying into cincinnati actually because it's a lot cheaper and driving down so maybe. we got a, we got a big selection of, of bourbon there okay. uh, as well no it's, it's it's a lot of fun it's cool yeah. It's it's like you know for people who who are into bourbon especially yeah. it's cool to see how it all goes down and why it's so specific to that you know to that region and stuff it's pretty neat. We uh, wanted to do the Cincinnati Cleveland like trip because Jamie works with uh, Michael Simon mm-hmm. so he's got Cleveland like on lock. By the way, and then I want and then I worked with you so I wanted to like hit Lachey's. I uh, I don't know if you saw when I, I did Michael's show last summer in Philly. Yeah, which was awesome. No, we watched it. it. It's funny you bring that up. Yeah, it was great. And it was like that, it's it was, I, you know I'd spent a lot of time in Philly. Burgers, you know, brews, and cues, which I love. But it was some cool spots, man. Like yeah. uh, like some great. And like, there was somebody else with bars. you. Uh, what was that guy's name? He's a local chef from right there in Philly. Um, Vetri. Mark Vetri. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. That is, was like an all star team. Is the chili on the spaghetti good? Oh, it's legendary. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you have that at Lachey's, or is that like, like only a version one place, of it? Only one place. Well, we that don't does that. because you, it's it's a specific. It's not just one specific restaurant. There's like three different yeah. chains in Cincinnati that that that's what they do is yeah. Cincinnati chili, and so you don't see other restaurants really doing it. Yeah. What about the Grater's ice cream? That's. I mean, that's, you can actually get that in L.A. now. They started selling that really. Else, which is well, like, ice cream's huge out here. It's a. Uh, I mean, it's a big, 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 big treat for me because I used to have to like dry ice ship it in. Yeah. And now you can you know, just go down to the supermarket wow. and get it. It's it's delicious. Killing it. Yeah, Grater's ice cream and, and Skyline chili. What's when you what's how I mean this is like the abridged version, but like how are you still have you still go to Cincinnati, but then like there's the bar. Yep. Still get back and uh, and and try. Are and, there days where like your whole day after like all the kids stuff is done, you're at the restaurant? I mean, we're not in Cincy anymore. Right. Really? I mean, we don't uh we we sold our house there. Oh, okay. So we uh we you know, we're pretty much exclusively LA now uh, Got it. at this point. You know, it's just with three kids, it's like, man, how much are we really going to go back and forth with, you know? Yeah, so that's you kind of said, "Hey, it's time to But you lived back to back with with Drew, right? We did. We shared a uh, we shared a yard, which, which was really cool. Um and uh and had, you know, had a lot of great memories there. But actually Drew sold his place there as well and moved downtown. Like he lives downtown Cincinnati oh, cool. now. 
about uh, three blocks from our bar. Um, so yeah, usually when I go in, it's like a, a quick weekend trip and, and I'll Got shoot it. in, you know, like I was trying to get in this weekend for the, you know, for the big fight. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it, but I'll be back there for opening. Where, the where do you stand on the fight? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I think, I mean, at this point when this drops, it will already have happened, but whatever. So we'll know. So, so I'm going to, my prediction is that, is that Floyd probably can't knock him out, won't knock him out, but I think it'll be, it'll, it'll be a decision to, to Mayweather. I don't see any way that. That you know McGregor can beat him. Yeah, at this point, people will know whether you're. We'll right. see. We'll yeah. hold you. To you it. I just if hope you, it's. I just hope it's entertaining. Fun. I mean, okay. I think Connor's. He's going to force the action. He's going to try to. But yeah. Floyd's so good defensively. I just don't. I don't. I don't think it's going to be any contest. Hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Hope do you, I'm wrong. Do you, I have a wedding and I can't watch it. But I'm hoping like we find a bar somewhere like outside the room that like might have it or somebody on their phone gets it and yeah. we all huddle around <laughs> but we're going to be those guys at the wedding trying to like yeah. watch a sporting event sure sure I've there's always there's, I've, yeah. been to, I've been to weddings where it's like K- kentucky derby day i'm like look let's just break away and you yeah. gotta go yeah. watch well that's good because it's like eight minutes that's true if there's seven right other enough. people who are into it then you're not a jerk for you know because then you're like hey everybody it wasn't just me. On the same page yeah i wasn't the instigator yeah, yeah if you're the one asshole on your cell phone then that's not a good look but yeah. if there's a group of guys strength in numbers if it's during the ceremony that's bad but once cocktail hour kind of you know is rolled the around, band yeah. is playing it's the hardest thing <laughs> yeah. and you're watching it's yeah. your song yeah uh yeah what? did you have anything else you wanted to ask before i was to gonna bring off? uh one one thing up i was very proud of you recently thank you uh our whole time uh working together i was very um i pushed you very hard to be more active on social media and you just recently posted the side by side of your sun tattoo and it sparked a whole fucking thing well i kept getting these people kept taking these these screenshots of, i guess there was like a, a meme or something going yeah. around of, of like an old picture of me from which early there 90, are many many embarrassing early ones. 90 degree days you know pointing at my at my sun tattoo which had a 90 degree in it and it's like when the weather hit 90 degrees, people would like send this out. So I'm like, all right, I got to do something with this. I've just gotten too many, yeah, too many, uh, you know, screenshots. Of this, so I try to have a little fun with it. Your guns look good from like, you know, the Trying, 90s to man. now, it's like it's, but you did the side by side sleeveless shirt. So that you know, my wife is much more proficient with, with social media than I am. So I, I won't lie. She gives a little help from time to time. And, yeah, but and that was a good one. I was like, Nick, good. You're learning. Thank you. Thank you. You're learning. So it was 98 degrees and sunny out and it was a side by side of the weather thing. With well, he has too. since filled it in. I filled oh, it I in. So I don't know the temperature anymore, but I, so I think my caption was how hot is it? Hell if I know, but it sure is sunny or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was good. Nice. I was, I was proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank um you. do you uh let's get, we have a segment that, that we like to close every episode with called the blow off where we are curious about how people get out of things. Is there a time recently when you've uh had to get out of something creatively or that you've that you've blown someone off? You know, it's it's uh I feel guilty even admitting to it, but it's it's going to be a little bit cliché I think. And that any time honestly you need to get out of something your kids are your your ultimate excuse. Yeah. You know, the sitter, the sitter fell through. So, yeah, uh, I, I won't name names because I don't want them to hear this and then know that it was about them. But there, <laughs> yeah. was, a, there was a dinner that my wife and I, we had committed to. And we just, uh, as the day got longer, we just said, I do not feel like going to dinner with these people. And uh, and so we had to pull the old, hey, uh, our sitter had, a, yeah. had an emergency, bailed. We, we can't get a sitter. Sorry, we're going to have to cancel. Well, that's where the premise of this whole podcast came from is like you make all these plans and then you get to the day of the plan. And you're like. I'm having dinner with who? Well, three weeks ago. It sounds like a great idea. Yeah, yeah. we'd love to get together. Of and course. then you've had a hard day or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh, the last thing I want to do right. is get in the get shower, dressed. get dressed, get ready, get in the car, drive all the way down there and have dinner with these people. So Do you do you believe in there's there's like a karmic uh reason why you should not say like lie and say that your kid is sick? Yes. Never pulled that one. Because I don't think then you go the down kid will road. get sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just bad, just bad, bad mojo. Like, it's just yeah. don't put that out there. You know, yeah. like, you know, you have to deal with enough sickness in the house. I know, right? Yeah, putting it out there. So yeah, we never, we never pulled out card. It's always the babysitter. Yeah, blame it on the sitter. Blame it on the sitter. Falling through. Vanessa's mad at me. Our fr- <laughs> we our can't friends, make it. Our friends like you guys have one flaky babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need a new babysitter. There's a lot going yeah. on in her life, man. You might want. She's the only one we trust. The other, you know, yeah. Um, did you have anything else, or should we uh, wrap no, it up? No, I'm good. I, it's this just so like fun. it's so great catching up. And, hey, man, great to see uh, you. Good luck to the see Bengals. I think they had a great draft. You know what, man? Here's the, the whole thing. Joe Mixon thing you know will be will be. I make think or Mixon. Break. I, you know, you're going to take your your lumps. I do think he'll be a model citizen, and I think that he's going to be a great pick. 
The John Ross one, though, it troubles me a little with the bit. Hamstring issues, yeah. Well, and he's—I mean, he's look blazing fast, but you also need then a quarterback who's going to lead him down the field. And if you watch, and I love Andy Dalton, he's my boy, but he's not known for his yeah, arm strength. He doesn't and have for, the cannon. I mean, if you watch AJ, every time he's going on a deep route, he's got to wait for the ball, exactly. And he gets, you know, you go up for a jump ball, and he gets like, it. But I felt like everything I read about John Ross, it just sounds like Peter Wark all over again. <sighs> Man. That's funny. That's not the first comparison I've heard to that. And Peter Work, when he was healthy, he was awesome. Was a monster. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, it'll be interesting. I, I just think honestly, we lost so much of our O line that you know I don't think Andy's going to have any time to get it downfield to anybody. Yeah. Um, so I kind of I texted him after um, after Whitworth left and came out here and you know, I said, man, I hope you hope you got your running shoes on because you're going to be running for your life all season long. Right. Well, we'll we'll see you at the games. And Pennsylvania is that? Are you are you still on that it. on that train? I love it. I love him. I think he's great. I think everybody says he's like he's a gym rat. He's you know he's they better be so. good. They got the defense. They got the they spent some receivers. money this year. Yeah. They got Alshon Jeffrey. So yeah. yeah. This has been sports talk with Nick Lachey. It was, it's been inevitably, it inevitably, it's going to happen. It's great. He's, the be- he's yeah, literally one of my one of the best people to talk sports with. It's so much fun. He knows everything. The uh, what's the album called again? Uh, the album called Let It Snow. Uh, it's out. It's out October sixteenth, I think, mid mid October. We're gonna this will we're, we're gonna drop this like uh, that week or what, week uh, before. What? Uh, anything else you want to mention? From yeah, me? I mean, just check out the. We're, we're on tour uh, starting November, I think, seventh through December twenty third. So you know, we'll be in. All across the country, look for the tour. We'll do a live podcast as the opener. Okay. Yeah. Every night. How about that? From the stage. Yeah. That will make lose all the fans. Yeah, way. then you'll yeah. lose all of the yeah. mothers and the children. Yes. It'll be the Happy Hanukkah podcast. Yeah, we'll sing the... Hanukkah Carol. Dreidel, <laughs> <laughs> dreidel, dreidel. But uh, no, Nick, <laughs> thank you so yeah. much. Uh, I no, appreciate it. On, I know your pleasure. days are very busy, so with three kids. Come on. It's been awesome. My pleasure. Thank you, man. Stay busy, everyone. Because I'm busy. Whenever I get with her, say I'm busy. And I'm going to hit you later because I'm busy. Busy with her.